Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Tartle and in this video we are going over the Ghost Minigun. All you need to know basically and I will be testing different modes and now at this point we are starting from where to buy it and how much it costs. We are at the crater and to buy it you just need to run into the central piece and Mortimer is your guy that is selling it. Run inside. And he runs straight, turn left, and Mortimer is sitting in here. One important information, the requirement to get it available to Parhes at all, you need to be allied with raiders. And now probably a lot of people will be telling me about the glitch to get it instantly. I know about the glitch and I don't even have anything against people that use it because it's quite easy, but I hate this glitch just because I was grinding this ally and now everyone thinks that I just used a glitch to get over it. But okay, that's not the point of this video. Let's go to the Mortimer. Ghost minigun, as you can see, will cost you 750 gold bullion. And then we have mods. The site is the cheapest one for 50 gold bullion. Then we have the minigun. Penta Barrel 150, Prime Capacitor 200, Tesla Capacitor 100, Tesla Dynamo 100, and Triple Barrel 150. And those are all available mods for the Ghost Minigun. I bought, I bought every single one of them just because I want to investigate this gun as much as it's possible. And now other question that I'm frequently getting from people, how I have so much gold. Oh, I don't have any more gold than anyone else. Basically, I'm running three different characters and like, for example, you show me already showcasing the plasma caster. This character does not have a plasma caster. This one has a ghost minigun. Now let's go to my camp. Now, what you need to craft one. Weapons workbench and then we go into the crafting section. It's under energy guns. It is energy gun and it is affected by energy gun perks. As you can see the cost is 11 aluminum, 4 circuitry, 1 11 screw, 2 silver, 4 spring, 21 steel plus 2 legendary modules what's 100 script in value of script. Now one important fact, fact to mention, normally science expert rank 2 we reduce the cost for crafting energy weapons. It's not the case when we're crafting those minigun. I will unequip all those perks, go back into crafting, energy weapons, ghost minigun. The cost is exactly the same. Nothing changes. You do not need to swap too much perks. You just need science rank one to be able to craft it. And as you can see, there is no plasma caster on this list. I do not own this in here. Now we will start with a test how the basic ghost minigun works without any modifications and without any legendary effects. It is bloodied, but as you can see, my health is full at this moment, what means the bloodied effect does absolutely nothing. And I'm doing that because I want to test the gun itself, not superpowers from the legendary effects uh, that I will be talking about in separate video because it's a long topic. After we test all the mods for this minigun, I will be comparing it with 50 cal machine gun and with Gatling plasma because both those weapons have similar fire rate. One is energy and one is ballistic. And minigun is mixed. It's by default is doing ballistic damage, but you can add modifications that will add energy damage on top of ballistic damage. Perks I'm using, it's basically everything that normally boosts a heavy gunner plus carry weight perks because I'm otherwise over encumbered. Important mentions is tenderizer, stabilized, there is no adrenaline, uh, but there is bloody mess. And of course I will be wearing my excavator power armor to have those benefits of stabilized perk. As you can see, base version I have at 500 ammo capacity and will be shooting this glowing behemoth. Doing okay. That's the best base version. And as you can see, I was shooting him for quite a while and used almost 90 rounds to kill him. 
but it's intentional. I can be much more effective going low health, but the reason of this video is going over all the modifications for this gun and compare it to other available guns. The separate video will be about superpowers that this weapon can get from legendary effects. Now let's take a look on available modifications. About the barrel, you can upgrade to 3 barrel and penta barrel. And this is what we'll be doing first. As you can see, the penta barrel is actually reducing the damage. 3 barrel is keeping the same damage, but reducing the accuracy and range. Penta barrel have a better accuracy and the same range, better fire rate, but the damage is so much lower that if you calculate this, penta barrel offers lower DPS than 3 barrel. It's really crazy how Penta Barrel offers higher fire rate but lower DPS and better accuracy than Free Barrel that normally should offer the higher accuracy. But those are the questions I cannot answer. Now before I will put any mods, uh, take a look. That's the accuracy at this moment. And you can see about this crosshair. This added crosshair is actually quite useful, although it will be good if there will be at least a dot at the middle. And okay, now let's see when I will modify it with a uh, 3 barrel. Installing 3 barrel. You can see accuracy is a little bit worse. It's not like a big difference. Let's see how we can improve it with a sight. And we are going for gunner sights. This is the only sight available. And now this is the accuracy. There is honestly like not much of a difference. I would expect sight to add more. Of course, this accuracy will be better when I enter my power armor and I will have benefits of stabilized. Now, 3 barrel, gunner sight and start at capacitor versus level 95 behemoth. Start firing, it's definitely doing better than standard barrel. And he's he was able to hit me, but he's dead instantly after. Let's keep another look on the accuracy. We'll be installing a penta barrel and let's see if it's worth it. There it is, penta barrel versus three barrel. Lower damage, higher accuracy, higher fire rate. And I think there is slightly better accuracy, but there is honestly not much of a difference. And here we are, another super mutant behemoth. Let's see if we're doing any better. Let him get up and start shooting. I can feel the lower damage. The DPS suffers. He's able to get back and hit us again. The DPS definitely suffered. Now we are going to keep the Penta Barrel, but we are changing into the Tesla Coil. The weakest version that's supposed to give us the best ammo capacity. I don't know if it's worth it, probably not, but we are going to shoot with Tesla Coil Dynamo and then we're going to upgrade for Tesla Coil Capacitor and then we are going to swap barrel back to 3 barrel to compare if penta barrel with the best possible capacitor that's not primed will be better than 3 barrel or not. And I should probably mention every time I'm visiting Behemoth, I'm unequipping and re-equipping the weapon to be sure that everything is working as intended. Okay, let's try to shoot him. Let's see. Do we have a significant amount of damage? I think we have a little bit. He died slightly faster, but there is not much of a difference. And by the way, ammo capacity, let me reload. It's 750 with this capacitor. And now we are going for Tesla Koi capacitor, the best non-prime capacitor. Okay, we have a fresh level 95 behemoth. Let's see how we can do with the best capacitor. Start shooting him. It's doing better than a previous capacitor. Actually missed a couple rounds, it's why he was able to hit me. And let's see the ammo capacity with this capacitor. It's 725. Then it's half of the bonus that we are getting from weaker capacitor. It's definitely not worth to go for higher ammo capacity. Now we are back to 3 barrel and Tesla coil capacitor is equipped. What I think is the best setup for non-prime goes minigun and let's see how will we go this time around will it be any better than a penta barrel let's see we are shooting he's going on us he's charging he's dead 
wasn't able to touch us. It barely started charging. Then it's definitely the best non-prime setup for normal ghost minigun, not including superpowers that will be in a separate video. Now let's see how it's stuck against the 50 cal. I have 50 cal equipped at this moment. The same perks, still no demolition expert. I wasn't using demolition expert and you should know that ghost minigun is actually considered to be an explosive weapon with small, small but still explosive effect and it will be slightly boosted by demolition ex expert. Yeah, 50 cal definitely did worse. I started firing a little bit earlier and he was able to hit me. Keep in mind for 50 cal there is no spin up time, then this is the advantage. And now we are going on the behemoth with Gatling Plasma. We have a spin up time and energy damage. Let's see how well we'll be doing. I think we are doing worse. He's charging and he's still quite healthy. Yeah, that was the worst performance so far. Worse than 50 cal and worse than Ghost Minigun. Ghost Minigun is a clear winner in this situation. Let's see how they will stack together if we compare them with Prime Capacitors. Important to mention, modifying for Prime Capacitor will cost you two pure Crimson Flux and two pure Violet Flux in, in addition to all other junk. Now the ammo cost. Standard 2mm electromagnetic cartridge. With ammo smith equipped, you will get 27 and it will cost you 5 lead and 15 steel, what's very expensive. If you will go for ultra sight ammo, you will get 108, it will cost you 8 lead and 22 steel, but in addition to that, you will need to use pure crimson flux and ultra sight. But for most people, I think it will be still worth it. Of course, after crafting, I swap pegs back to what it was. Okay, let's see now how Gatling Plasma with Prime Capacitor will perform versus this behemoth. Wake up. He's waking up. It's performing definitely better, but nothing spectacular. He's still able to hit me. Now let's see how Prime 50 cal will be performing. Instant firing is nice compared to spinning up the barrel, but damage was able to hit me, then he died straight away. And finally goes Minigam, Prime Capacitor. Let's see how this is doing. He wasn't able to hit me, then definitely outperform the competition. We'll be doing one final test. I'm going to equip Demolition Expert and see if it's help. I only have space for rank 3 Demolition Expert but it's already 40% extra damage, max rank is 60%, and it's not a huge difference. If you'll not be able to see much of a difference here, then it's what you can expect. And it's quite expensive to equip more than rank one of Demolition Expert. Okay, the final test, Demolition Expert, everything equipped. Let's see what can we do in here. Yeah, we definitely did slightly more damage, but it cost us some perk points and it does improve damage, but it's not something crazy. This gun definitely outperforms any other heavy gun we have so far in the game, but it costs you the most expensive ammunition to use, then that pretty much has sense. And in the same time, it does do explosive damage and can be boosted by Demolition Expert, but it's not like a huge difference. It's similar to explosive guns, it just explosion effect is built in into the gun and it's not a legendary effect. That's the main difference. About the mods, I will definitely recommend 3 barrel over the penta barrel for most cases. I hope this will answer all the questions that you could possibly have about this uh, new ghost minigun, amazing weapon added with wastelanders. If somehow I didn't answer all your questions, was actually pretty much possible, uh, please go into the comment section and drop those questions over there and I will do my best to answer them. And now as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.